Thumbnail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do this. <laughs> Are you ready for next video? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about Exodus 90. The first thing people usually think of when you say Exodus 90 is, oh no, not the cold showers. <laughs> uh, but it's more than that. Hey, brother. Hey, bro. <laughs> Tell me about Exodus. How was your experience last time when you did it? Oh, man. Uh, it was like really hard. And I kind of dread it, thinking about it, but also it's like one of the biggest turning points, I think, of my faith was Exodus 90. I've done Exodus 90 already once, and this will be my second time going into it. What Exodus 90 is all about, it's about entering into a greater freedom. Now, obviously, what we'd have to ask is what exactly is freedom? And are we free? What makes us more free? Exodus essentially means like a leaving, a departure, a journeying of people, um, and this is what it's about. It's, it's about the story of, like in the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, we, which we read through over Exodus, is a journey of the chosen people in Israel leaving uh, slavery and departing out of that. And that's, that's what Exodus is about, is a personal journey, but also a journey with brothers of leaving uh, whatever is holding us captive or being a rival to our hearts um, in, in being able to say yes to Christ. It was, it was really extreme for me, which is what I think I needed. Because like, holy, not that I wasn't, uh, what's the word, ascetic, well I wasn't really, I never fasted or did anything extreme, like, I didn't really wake up early, go to mass, I was just kind of like low-key, just kind of going along with my faith, so then I just, right when Exodus started, it was waking up at 6, which is, sounds extreme, but I actually did it for quite a while, we did morning prayer. Uh, so I did it with I did it with you and Logan, and that was like the first thing that was really hard. But uh, when I the more I started to just like deny myself of small pleasures because I'm the kind of guy who just really likes little pleasures like hot showers. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember the fruits of in times of not knowing what to do instead of like going on my phone or just going to have a snack or something like that. I had like, it's not like I had no other choice but to either like read or pray. <laughs> so <laughs> just doing that, it started to form me. Just that, that's like what my life was. It just started to be a habit. So you're thinking of doing Exodus? Yeah, you want to join our group? Yeah, I'm down. Okay, well, sounds good. I'll send you the <laughs> link then, okay? Jeez, how does it work? I actually don't know that well. I got, I've been told it's just been a while. Okay, so Exodus 90 is structured around three things, a fraternity, prayer, and asceticism. Prayer is the main thing. If you're not having the prayer around it, I uh, would say really try and reevaluate uh, what the focus is in this. Asceticism is usually what people talk about when it comes to Exodus 90 because there's all these things you have to give up and you have to, you, you do cold showers, uh, you don't have sweets, you stay away from social media, uh, no shows, and various other things. You see, to enter into a greater freedom, uh, and this was my experience, when you're stripped away from some of just the regular things in this world, and some of the things aren't even that bad, like only having water, it's not that bad to have a glass of juice sometimes, but when it's stripped away from you and you no longer have it, it gets you to think, okay, was that, was my happiness reliant on just being able to have drinks? Or is my happiness reliant on just being able to have snacks? Whenever I'm feeling sad or down or discouraged, do I just go for have a snack? It's kind of a way to reevaluate <laughs> where you're getting your source of what keeps you going and what is your, your main drive and your source of strength. And this is where brothers and prayer comes in. Hey, why did you decide to do Exodus? <laughs> We describe Exodus in one word that you think it's gonna be, or one sentence. <laughs> a challenge worth doing. A challenge worth doing. Yeah, I think okay, so. that's good. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I think Christ just became like so real to me. Uh, yeah, I just felt like a real person. Like I don't know, I just felt it in my heart that it was just it was real, like personally, and me accepting it. Yeah. And I, like I don't know the exact turning point, but I think it just clicked to me that like okay, like. Jesus is a real person and he's like really God and he, I don't know, he just kind of like is inside of you and it was just like, ah, like I still don't really, I don't know. <laughs> no, I totally know what you mean. I think even just like when in a cold shower or having to sacrifice or give up something when you when you don't 
feel like it, but you do it out of love and you're trying to grow in love, it's like, it's, it helps me better understand what Christ has done for us on the cross. Yeah, I was just about to say that. It's like such a small thing, but even just doing a cold shower and like denying yourself of what you don't want to do, but it feels good because, yeah, you're doing it out of love. Yeah, and like lifting it up for someone and be like, I, I'm, I'm trying to, to grow in love. Yeah, it was such a real way of just being like, I'm not living for myself. Because it's so easy to get in that mindset of like, okay, I'm doing what makes me happy because it's just like, it's myself. It's my yeah, life. and not, it becomes so real, I think, too, because it's like so physical. Like these are physical, real life things when you 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 have the cold water running out your body and you're like, ah, like you feel it, it's real. And then you're not having a snack or fasting in different ways. And then the, like the fraternity aspect of with the brothers uh, and the time and prayer, like the silence. I want to do Exodus because I wanted to be free. It's an opportunity to refocus on God, refocus on my life and refocus on becoming who I actually want to be instead of letting it just slide. And allows me to do it in a group of men that are going to support me and are on the same journey as me and want to be the same kind of man that I want to do, the kind of men that are going to rebuild the church, the kind of men that are going to rebuild the world, the kind of men that change lives by their example. And that's the kind of man I want to be. And Exodus lets me start that journey and it avails me to God's grace to begin that process again to become who I actually want to be instead of this person I was letting myself become. Nice man. <laughs> that's good. Oh. Everything in this world will eventually pass away. Uh, and that includes myself. <laughs> and the only thing that will remain is uh, what is eternal. And what is eternal? Well, I would say it is other brothers, so other people, those we love and God in heaven and, and ultimately a union with Christ. So that's why the prayer in the brothers is so important. And when we find ourselves discouraged or we find ourselves uh, just wanting <laughs> sort of these little sources of comfort, that we can often usually turn to uh, to distract us from the main issue in our heart of our longing for Christ and our desire to um, be loved and to be seen and to be known. And this greater diving into this silence, uh, this prayer, and uh, this fraternity, and all with a chance and opportunity to grow in love through the sacrifice and lifting up these things that we, we give up in order to uh, deepen our prayer. It's kind of like a way to, to actually put skin in the game. It's not just, oh yeah, I, I believe in the faith or I, I want to um, grow and have self-discipline and not just live for day by day in the things of this world. Um, it's just, we can have that rational idea of we are, but when you actually start putting skin in the game and you start sacrificing and giving up these things, even when you don't always feel like it, it's uh, pretty freeing. And also extremely revealing. It's kind of humbling at times because I've realized, whoa, I've put a lot of my strength and <laughs> reliant on all these little consolations and, and pleasures. This can be dangerous if I approach it in a, a way that's just focusing on the negative and focusing on what I'm giving up, focusing on what I can't do. <laughs> that's not what it's about. It's more about, instead of saying, focusing on what you're not doing, it's focusing on what you're saying yes to. It's like Exodus has huge benefits and if it's done right, it can be so fruitful. But also I think if it's not done right, it can almost, it can have a lot of damage on others in your life if you don't do it right. Because, number one, I mean, it's just, it's life in general, but if you're discouraged and you're constantly mad about what you're doing, everyone around you is going to be like, well, what, what the heck? Like, why is he doing this? Because he's just mad. Even though it's like a struggle and you can still have that struggle, but it's about finding the joy in the struggle. But if you don't, everyone around you is going to be like, what's this guy doing? Like, he's just a grumpy guy now. <laughs> no, it's so true people. though. It's so true. Being grumpy is obviously just going to like affect everyone around you. They like, don't want to be with you or they'll just feel low. So that is huge to notice that if you're ever feeling discouraged or grumpy with others to like quickly flip the switch and just like be intentional about being happy. You just know it's hard. And the, the hard thing too is like, it's so real because it reveals the attachment to these things where it's like this, my happiness is relying on this. And when I don't have it, I'm no longer having joy. It, you have to learn to switch and be like, where is my happiness coming from? So that's why it's so revealing, but it's also, yeah, you got to make sure to have joy in it because it can just be hard for the people around you. But then it can also be like, yeah, there's the flip side, but then the other flip side of like the best thing about it is that people know you're doing Exodus and they see like this renewed, like, abundant joy, then that's really going to affect them in like a positive way because they're going to be like, this guy's so happy now, like he wasn't even this happy before and now he's literally denying himself all these pleasures, but yet he's so happy. So, uh, that's so then, true. Like, I look, and I saw that in you last year, like a lot. You inspired me so much. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Wait, yeah, I think so. This is all about having a greater freedom to better enter into the present 
to enter into reality, to be more present to those around you, and to focus more on Christ and God and people instead of just things. So those are some ways that uh, that is that I have understood this. And I gotta say, doing Exodus for the first time was extremely uh, fruitful because it's also rooted in the Word of God. You read scripture every day, and uh, I'm excited to see the fruits and what the Lord is going to bring out of uh, the second time going through. <laughs> How's it going? Okay, this is Hui, one of my brothers. He's going to be doing Exodus, or we're doing it together. What would you say is one, one of the reasons why you're doing it? Definitely to challenge myself, push myself to the limit. Probably the toughest thing for me is staying off uh, the internet. Like no kind of yeah. uh, not work related usage of phones and technologies. I asked him, and it was, I, he'd never heard about it. I said, okay, here's what Exodus is. And like five minutes in, he's like, okay, I'm in, let's do it. I'm like, what? <laughs> I did tell him that the more I think about it, the more I will think of reasons to not do it. So yeah, it's not so much about the rigidity to the law, but it's more about the consistency in who I'm trying to be and trying to align myself to uh, what's eternal. It's definitely just a practice of death, a practice of dying in order to imitate Christ and to follow Christ uh, and to allow his love to penetrate my heart and his word, his uh, truth to uh, to touch me on a heart level so I can move me to action in order to serve and better love others. Are you in, man? I'm in. First exodus, time to go take a cold shower. Are you? <laughs> okay, let's do it. Thanks for the meeting. If you've never done Exodus 90, I, I highly suggest you look into it. You still have time, and if it's already started, just start a little late. Even I, last year, some guys uh, started with us about a week after, um, and it, it ends on Easter, which is, uh, makes the resurrection in Easter so, so glorious and uh, it leads into Lent as well. So if you haven't done it, I highly suggest you check it out. You can go to exodus90.com uh, and they have an amazing app with all uh, the features so you can check off what you've done. You can read the daily reflection and you can text all your brothers in the fraternity uh, to stay in contact. All the other guys who are heading into Exodus here, I uh, am excited to journey in this with you. Please make sure to subscribe and comment down below if you've heard of Exodus, if you're doing Exodus, or you would like to try it. Thanks so much for watching. Continue glorifying God with your lives. Peace be with you, and we will see you in the next video.